their grills, and I'm about to drop seven celebrities, including the Southern African, Christophe. Welcome to Mission Survive. This is no safari. It's one of those countries that if you don't respect it, it'll kill you. <sighs> oh, this hurts. And it's not going to be easy terrain. We're in the mountains, up through river valleys. It does scare me, but being an actress, you have to be a survivor. You're going to get tired. <sighs> You're going to get hungry. Oh, I think it's going to be hard with me being a vegetarian. I just can't do it. You're going to feel beaten up. <laughs> I know my body can handle this. Ta -da! What I'm worried about is the psychological aspects. Use your brain. Without it, you're screwed. <gasps> go, 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 go! This is really Blair Witch. Most people in a survival situation die. I want to be there for the whole duration. Make no mistake. Come on, Blair. <laughs> Heroes are made. They're not born. We're out of our depth. I think the Lord is going to punish Bear Grill. The person that gives the most. I can't, my hands are going. Oh! I don't want to die. This is what Bear does to you. Wins. The Karoo, South Africa. Seven celebrities have spent a comfortable night in luxury safari tents. This is a spot to remember. This is a place to come back to. It's beautiful. So now it kicks in for real, because we're going into the wild bit. And they're all apprehensive about the journey ahead. I need a toilet. I'm nervous. <laughs> Take advantage of using a toilet now, and then, uh, and then we're off. Somebody's in there before me. I think Stuart's doing the same thing. <laughs> I think this toilet's give up the ghost flushing wise as well, by the way. 10,000 feet above them. Beneath me, the celebrities are waiting on the ground and they have no idea what lies ahead. And Scott, one of my team, is getting them ready. Let's grab your wee bottles, please. First task for the rookie survivors, give Scott, one of Bear's lieutenants, a bottle filled with their own pee. I can top up a bit more in a minute, you? if you like. No, that's okay. fine. That'll do us the trick. Not enough? No, it's enough. Sit here and have a little think about what's going to happen. I think I should have done Strictly, really. Over the next 12 days, these celebrities are going to encounter everything that the wild can throw at them. And I'm looking for the man or the woman that responds best to those hardships. Because at the end, there'll be only one. Come on, guys, quick as we can. Come on, keep closed up. Kneeling down, please, facing that way. Heading into the wilderness, actress Michelle Collins, best known for roles in EastEnders and Coronation Street. I'm 53. I feel quite positive with life. I don't know if I can cope with the pressure. I just hope I'm not one of these people that's just going to cry all the time. But I think that's the whole point of being with someone like Bear. You hope that he's going to give you a strength that you didn't know that you had within you. Also on the expedition, football manager and former England captain, Stuart Pearce. I do a weekly radio show with Mike Tindall, who, who did Mission Survive last year, and when I asked him about putting my name forward, the look in his eyes told me how tough it was. I'm scared of heights. And it really intrigues me to test myself and see how I do actually react under these circumstances. 
Unfortunately for Stuart, Bear is about to airlift them 600 feet above the ground and fly them into the wilderness. Here we go! That's it, we're off! Turn yourself around, Here we go! How you doing, brother? I'm alright. So I've got these guys on a system called a spy ring. And this was originally developed by the American military in the Vietnam War. And it was a way of getting troops in and out of difficult terrain. But for these guys on the end, it's literally plucking them out of their comfort zone and dropping them into hell. I love it. Oh my God, look at this. Right through the ravine. Isn't this fantastic? Joining Stuart and Michelle on the first draw is Neil Morrissey, best known as the voice of Bob the Builder and for his roles in Grantchester and Men Behaving Badly. I'd like to think of myself as a sort of a, a minor bon viveur. I like to be fat and pissed. I wholeheartedly um, enter into this not expecting to win, but it would mean a hell of a lot if I did. That'd be right up there with two number ones as Bob the Builder. That's going to be the, the catchphrase. It is, Neil, can we fix it? Also on board, Waterloo Road and casualty actress Chelsea Healy. I'm not that keen on camping. I don't like the smell of it. I don't like the not sleeping. I don't like the dampness. So I don't know why the hell I'm doing this. <laughs> Michelle, is it in your new name? Meg, Bear's second lieutenant, guides in the helicopter. How was that, big boy? Once we get up there, I'm all right, you know? Yeah. Just yeah. settle the uh, heart rate down. Yeah. I am a disaster with heights. Every time, no matter how many times I do them, they scare the life out of me. You went very quiet, didn't you? I always you said, do. I'd go quiet. First drop complete, Bear returns for the remaining celebrities. Star of stage and screen, Samantha Barks. The role I'm most well known for is Eponine in Les Miserables. What's really strange is that I spend most of my time on stage or in film covered in dirt, but it's makeup, so actually to be doing it for real, I don't know how I'm gonna react, but there's something about sort of getting down and dirty, being Laura Croft style, that really excites me. Oh, this is going to be unbelievable. Also on the second airlift, choreographer and dancing on ice judge, Jason Gardner. I have very strong opinions. If people don't like who I am and what I'm about, then that's their problem, not mine. Uh, something that I've struggled with for a very, very long time is my OCDs. I can get the rest of my body completely dirty, except for my hands. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I know, it's crazy. Relax. Relax. I'm going to take you relaxed. Stay facing that way. You ever think you're doing this in your life? Joining Jason and Samantha is Alex Scott, Arsenal and England footballer. Opinion and attitudes was before that, you know, to play football, you've got to look rough. And that's totally not us. We like to be glamorous and do the everyday girly stuff. The girls will tell you if it's raining, I'm the first to go and put my hat on because I don't want my hair getting wet. It's going to be a real challenge for me. I'm just glad that we went first because if I'd have seen what they were doing, I think I would have panicked a bit. Oh, my God, look where we're going! I want to arrive like that all the time now, for everything, even meetings. From the drop zone in the Karoo, the rookie survivors will embark on a punishing 12-day expedition. In a different location every night and always on the move, the group must navigate mountain ranges, ravines and rivers. Encountering Africa's wildlife along the way, they need to scale soaring cliffs and traverse a brutal coastline to reach the Indian Ocean and safety. 
After each mission, Bear will assess individual ability and send home the person he decides will not survive. OK, so that's all the celebrities on the ground. And from here, they've got a big height up into the mountains. I'm going to move on ahead and airdrop some supplies for them. OK, we do need to get a move on. I'm going to be at the front. You guys need to follow me up. I think the hardship starts now. Sleeping out here, uncompromising terrain. I've only got little thighs. If I could borrow half of half Stuart Pierce's thighs, I'd be fine. But this is going to hurt me. Let's go. To reach Bear, the team must hike to over 3,000 feet above sea level. My gosh. This is a climb. Right, mate. That's hard. Harder than it looks. It's getting hot now. Only half an hour into the climb, actress Chelsea Healy is already struggling. Oh, my God, guys, I just need two minutes, sorry. Oh, f guys. I'm not fit in the slightest. My legs can barely even reach each rock cos they're about that big. It is hard work for me. OK, guys, we need to pick up the pace bit. Bear's waiting for us. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. Higher into the mountain range, South Africa's unpredictable weather has a surprise in store. That's big rain coming. My gosh, it's just come from nowhere. That's quite dramatic, isn't it? Look at it. I know. What a difference. Oh, shit. See, that's not survival. That's torture. It's freezing, freezing cold rain now, driving wind. Yeah, it's just uh, not very pleasant. Coming up, the celebrities experience their first night in the wild. What was that? And Neil draws first blood. Thank God it wasn't an inch further up because it would have snapped my finger. The Karoo, South Africa. Bear Grylls has dropped seven celebrities into the wilderness. Absolutely freezing. Oh. To reach overnight camp, they face a treacherous hike in extreme weather. Uh, climate change has been quite incredible. Over an hour's period, we've come from bright sunshine to a situation where the rain's coming through the valley now, the temperature's dropped probably 20 degrees. I don't know if I expected this on the first day. This is quite severe, isn't it? Oh, it's, this is hailstones. Ooh. Oh, it's hailstones! Dead bear! Oh. After an exhausting climb, the celebrities eventually reach camp, where Bear is waiting. Oh. Some of you guys are looking cold. I'm going to break into your sleeping systems just to get round you. Yeah. OK, so wrap yourselves up in that. Really huddle together, get warm. Neil, come in and touch Neil. Neil. So welcome to the African bushveld. This is no safari. What lies ahead of you now is going to be pure survival. We're surrounded by some of the most dangerous wildlife in all of Africa. We've got leopards, we've got snakes, and also a lot of scorpions. It took me about a minute and a half to find one. Under here. Oh, oh my goodness. gosh. If you get stung by one of the deadly ones of these and you don't get medical help, you won't make it. OK, one of you guys can have that for dinner later. Over the next 12 days, we've got a big journey. Long days, long nights, limited rations, and you're out every night. You're going to get tired, hungry, cold, wet. But my message at minute one, day one of this journey is get used to the hurting. What I'm looking for is the man or the woman that most sums up the spirit of a survivor, positivity. Courage, determination, resourcefulness. Remember these words. Beside you guys, every step of this journey are going to be two of my most trusted. Scott, former Royal Marine Commando. Meg, mountain guide survival expert. They are the eyes and ears for me over everything you guys do. They are not here to help you. I've airdropped two lots of supplies into the mountains. You've got to locate those two airdrops, make some decisions about what you're prepared to carry for the next 12 days. One airdrop is at 170 degrees. The other airdrop is at 110 degrees. 
starts now. You need to work fast. You're good to go, guys. You guys need to really think about what you're collecting, what you need, what you can leave behind. That's on 170. To find the supply drops, the group must split into two teams. So we're picking up that rock over there. Yep. Then decide what essential kit to take on the 12-day expedition and what items to leave behind. Keep following the directions we've been given here, picking up points as we go. Stuart takes charge of his yeah, team's compass, ten. but immediately leads them into danger. Is that a big drop-off in front of you there, Stu? Well, according to this, he's sending me that way. That's so near the edge, Stu. Let's get a bit of high ground, see if we can see anything, and then look along 110 again. The team shot off really led by Stuart. Compass bearing, actually, too fast. I mean, we nearly went over that cliff. Oh, my God, hang on. Have you got it? I found something over here. Yeah! <laughs> In the other team, Jason, Alex and Michelle are already stocking up on supplies. Why rope with it? Well, that must be important. <laughs> oh, soap! It's like a car boot sale. Oh, it's better. <laughs> I'm just going to put these all in a sleeping bag and then we can drag the sleeping bag. You know, and what I've said is that they only need what they can fit in their rucksack, no more. Any luxuries, any extras, ditch it. This billy's going to be yeah, important. That's gonna be Hopefully I'm going to be able to carry it. I've made the decision of loading up our sleeping bags as well. We've pretty much taken everything. I feel like, you know, Santa in a very unconventional place. But uh, I've got to get my sack of goodies all the way to the top of the mountain. <laughs> I don't know what it's in this bag, but it's heavy. Shall we look at what we don't need first? It's the bare minimum we need. What about the mugs and the soaps? Leave the soap. A camp shower is a no-go, yes? There's things like, you know, a shower. Those are luxuries, and we're not going to have time to do that. I mean, look at, look at it right now. I don't feel like stripping off and getting a fake shower. I'd just, you know, wet wipe and go. <laughs> we have to, like, make some sort of a shelter and a canopy. Already back at camp, Jason's team unpack their supplies. And a hammer. No wonder that was bloody heavy. Yeah, we needed it. Despite using their sleeping bags to carry almost every item, they discover essential kit has been left behind. Did we have any any rope? Was there any um, guy line? Well, why don't we just leave the guy line and just put it up? Because the only way we can get it up is with the guy line. I thought they were actually going to start building the shelter. They got no power cord. Left it down there. Oh, no. <laughs> the soap's gone in the sleeping bag. We've really messed up, haven't we? We've just got tons of bloody soap. Having carefully selected their supplies, Stuart and his team return to camp and join the others. Bring all of you guys together now. Let's get all the kit down collectively that you've brought. We need to see what we got, what you've left behind. You know, bear in mind I said you guys are going to be carrying this stuff for the next 12 days. Who thought soap was a good idea? I hate soap in the wild. We did three months on Everest and certainly never had any showers. And he hasn't used soap since about 1983. <laughs> <laughs> you've got no paracord, I see. So you can't put a tarp up. You see, you've bought this 5 kg of mallet that you do not want to be carrying across mountains. That is not smart survival. Who thought that was a good idea? That was me, sorry. OK. Jason, consider this your low point. It's only up from here. OK, you've got to be able to carry all this stuff in your backpack. I know this is hard and it's a steep learning curve, but I'm going to be tough on you for a reason, because I want you to survive this journey. So now I've got to step in. All right, there's some paracord. You've got everything you now need. Let's go. Is it worth getting everything out and having a look what we've got? God, I'm actually getting um, a bit emotional about it. I was more concerned about bringing as much back for everybody and, you know, looking at sort of the comfort stuff and and I could kick myself that I missed those fundamental things that um, is the difference between, you know, living and, and dying in this kind of condition. If we can attach that, we can just shut you off that big thing. So Using the paracord Bear has given them, the rookie survivors can now build shelter. But they lack leadership and any kind of plan. We're going around in circles, aren't we? And, and we don't know what the we're doing. First thing to do, priorities of survival, protection, fire. OK, you've got to get a fire, you've got to get a tarp up, got to get some overhead cover. Too many ideas. The time's gone for ideas. Now they need to work. Yeah. Big circle. Set a circle. Yeah. 
Stuart, Samantha and Neil begin to clear an area for the fire. All right, guys, just so you don't get hypothermia tonight, OK, it's not essential to put rocks around a fire. It is essential to light the thing. OK, let's get the thing lit. Deciding to use a bush as the foundation for a shelter, Alex, Michelle and Jason work together to make it waterproof. We're going to make a windbreak around this side where the wind is coming through and hopefully we, we, we'll be able to huddle here. But not everyone is getting involved. I'm cold, I'm hungry and it is the first night. How will I cope? Come on, my beauty. That's actually coming up quite well, mate. Like Chelsea, he's all standing around. She thinks she's a bit lost. She doesn't really know what to do. Whereas she should really be throwing herself into gathering wood and actually sort of becoming part of the team. Well, guys, I think we've got a, a secured shelter. Well done, mate. Team shelter. We've decided to go into the bush, and so we had some natural shelter, but I can't see how seven of us are going to sleep under there tonight. They say body heat keeps you warm, so I'm sure there's going to be a few of us culling on to each other. So, listen, think what you've got to do tonight. All times, you need to have one person out here on fire duty and on wildlife duty. We talked about that, didn't we? OK. Yeah. Animals are inquisitive. If you hear something you don't like, get everyone up, stoke up the fire, grab some big sticks, make a ton of noise, and show them that it's not worth the fight. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. As night falls, Bear and his lieutenants settle around their campfire, while the celebrities dry sleeping bags around theirs and prepare for a night in the bush, literally. It's really taking life back to the most basic form because it's real life survival. It's cold. It's, you know, probably three or four degrees. God knows what tomorrow's got to hold. We've got to try and stay warm and, and fed and, uh, and get, get a bit of kip in. You know, so, yeah, it's daunting. First night, we've had a hell of a day, to be fair. We've managed to build a shelter under this tree. I'll just show you it. Not bad at all. And from there, basically, I'm just about to get my head down because I'm on second fire watch, which gives me two hours in bed before I have to get up for two hours. So, good night and God bless. The first night watch is taken by Alex and Samantha. Night, gang. The hat. Do we have to get the guys up? Seven celebrities are spending their first night in the wilds of South Africa. The hat. Do we have to get the guys up? Footballer Alex Scott and theatre star Samantha Barks are on night watch. She ain't bird. The rest of the group sleep in a nearby bush. So I just want to test if these guys have really taken on what I've said about the animal threat around here. So what I've done is asked Scott to head up the side of the mountain here and play some just quiet animal noise. Uh, the animal's coming. And what I want to do is test two things. One is whether these guys are alert, and two is how they react. We're good, Sam. You're right. This has run for 10 minutes yeah. and have done nothing. Next time, it might not be an exercise. OK, let's let it die down, and then let's get in. OK, you guys heard all that? Yeah. OK, I don't know what you were listening to, but what I heard was loud. An aggressive predator, more like in the jackal, plus the baboons. You know, baboons are dangerous animals. Stop, think, remember what I said. You've got to massively stoke up the fire, get them up. You hear that again. Kick them out of bed. I don't care if they're sleeping. Yeah, OK, Good. thank you. It's just a, a real awareness has hit us that it's like, oh, my God, anything, anything is here. Five a.m. And after a cold and eventful night, everyone is suffering. I see my back. I couldn't zip it up properly, so I was freezing. So. I didn't sleep at all, really. I kind of almost want to get bitten by a snake, so I have to be helicoptered to a nice warm hospital. 
I'm going to be looking for snakes today. <laughs> saying, come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. Eleven days of the gruelling expedition remain, but not for everyone. At the end of today, Bear will decide which celebrity is least equipped to survive in the wild and send them packing. <laughs> well, at least morale's picked out, that's good. <laughs> today, I wanted to be a fresh start. Best way of having fresh starts is baptism. And when it gets wet and it gets hot, it's also going to get humid, which means mosquitoes, so there's going to be a purpose behind this. Who's got some water? No more clean things. It's just a wild, it's a new you. And once this happens, we all feel better. <laughs> Brings out the bit of warrior spirit in us all. It's a facial, right? Yeah. <laughs> a mud pack. <laughs> this whole journey for all of you is going to be about facing things that are difficult and finding ways through them. OK, Jason, I know things like the dirt, and your hands is hard for you. The best way to get through your fears is to go through them, OK? The more you avoid stuff, the more of a mess you make of it. Give me your hands. OK, good. The sooner you get this out of your system, Jason, the better, OK? When we don't like stuff, we avoid it. No more gloves for you unless we're rappelling or climbing. OK, good. I'm struggling so much with the fact that I've got, um, <laughs> that I've got, um, uh, that I've got dirt on my hands. This is really quite tough for me. If this whole process can get rid of that, then I tell you, I would be so happy with that. OK, team, are you ready to go? Let's go. Tired and hungry, the group hike to the first challenge of the day. A 400-foot-long mountain rescue line strung across a deep ravine. Still battling a fear of heights, Stuart is first to attempt the descent alongside Chelsea. The use is for getting casualties off a mountain or for getting supplies back up a mountain. You guys are going to go together as a pair. All right, you're going to control your own descent, which means the safety is 100% in your hands. You OK with this? Perfect, yeah. OK, good. Heights are one of my fears, and that's obviously something that I'm going to have to face. It's the look over the edge is, is when it really catches hold of me. But thanks for asking. Chelsea, yes. you're going to be in charge of the descent. And Stuart, yeah. you're just feeding this out for her. All right? Yeah. Very good. Yeah, I'm ready. Ah! Ooh, 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 ooh. Come out, yeah. you've got my legs, babe. Ooh. Come on. Ooh. Well done. Am I going too fast for you? No, you're good, no. babe. You're good. You keep doing what you're doing. Chelsea, you've got to control the descent. Yeah. Slow it down. Now stop it about there. Steady, steady. One of the dangers of doing this with a heavy backpack on yeah. is if you lose your counterbalance and it turns you upside down. So you've got a really heavy bergen on your back and then you slide out your harness. So what I'm going to get you to do now, both of you, is take your backpacks off and hang your bergens off those slings. I Don't let go. I won't, I won't. Go on, Sherry, well done. And then, Stuart, you're putting it onto the carabiner. Somewhere where it's not going to break. What you've got to remember is just how important these backpacks are for them. It's got all of their supplies in it, their food, Drop one backpack, you're in a lot of trouble. Come on, fella. I need to help you. Come on. Steady. Come on. OK, good. Well done. Oh, steady, oh, steady. Oh. Come on. Ah. That's not bad, really, considering Stuart really struggles with heights. Oh. Right, steady, oh. steady. Yeah. Well done. Oh. Well done. Thank you. You're brilliant up there. Chelsea's quite calm at heights. Mm. She was the one breaking and, and doing the ropes. So I'm in her, <laughs> in her hands. And she done brilliant. Well, done, got me back done safe. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Ready? Neil yeah. and Samantha are next to tackle the ravine. <sighs> They're off to a bad start when Neil traps his hand under the rock. Just check that injury. It hasn't broken anything. Okay. Good. It's just a graze. First scar, it's good. Yeah, man. Meg, just to let you know, Neil's got a little bit of an injury. Nothing is gonna kill him, but first blood. I wish I could sit up right more. 
I wish I wasn't lying down like this. Oh, no. You've got to get your backpacks off. You could take yours off now. Yours is attached. OK. OK. We're good? Yeah, see if you can get your pack off now. That will drop, yeah? OK, good job, guys. Well done. OK, guys, keep, keep coming until your feet are on the ground. Slow but safe. How about that? First blood. Thank God it wasn't an inch further up because it would have snapped my finger. But then let's not speculate on that. That's actually quite a painful, nasty injury. Ripped straight through the glove, straight through his skin. But to give him his due, he kind of laughed it off. Survivor mentality, you definitely need a bit of that. Thank you very much. Happy? There we go. First, Job done. First blood, mate. And bear said. Great, Jason. With four celebrities safely across, Jason makes the descent alone. Good job. OK. Nice speed all the way to the bottom. OK, look at that. That's a cool sight. That's how it should be done. Just keep coming all the way down until you're on the ground. You know, it just shows it's not about the number of hands. It's about the quality of the brain and the ability to control the emotions when you're scared. Forget my hands. This was absolutely what I needed. I really needed this to go well. Oh, my God. Last two attempt the crossing, Alex and Michelle. Michelle, right hand on there. That's your break hand. At no point does your hand come off this. So if you do, to the bottom. OK, this is when the nerves start to kick in. Now I'm starting to think about the height situation. Oh, I feel like I'm going over the edge. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, shit. Yeah, you're good, you're good. Now you just take control of that. You break us, break us. Break, break. Oh, oh. oh. oh shit. What? My hand. My hand. What's wrong with your hand? No, I've got it. I've got it. It's OK. You've got to get your backpacks off. OK. Gone? Wait. What? It's not attached to anything. Oh, f Hold on. I'm losing this thing. No, you stay. You stay. I've got it. i got it. I don't. Oh, Michelle, just hold wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. Shit. Coming up. Bear emphasises the importance of rehydration. What is it about your obsession with piss? And one celebrity will go. I've made my decision. South Africa. Seven celebrities are on a 12-day test of survival. My finger's got caught. That's it. I've got it. i got it. I oh, don't. Actress Michelle Collins and footballer Alex Scott are hanging 170 feet above a ravine. And they're in trouble. Michelle, just hold it. Wait, wait, wait. So they've now slid another 20 or 30 foot. But that, to me, is a big error. It means they haven't got control of their descent. Can I do anything? No. You just keep holding that rope, yeah. girl. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Now the other backpack is teetering off her other foot. She's either an incredibly good footballer Oh, she's very lucky. Great work. Yeah. OK, finally at the bottom. Michelle, I didn't want to panic yeah. here, but we could have lost our bags. I let it go, and it wasn't clipped in. Definitely used my football skills. Tried not to panic when I realised they wasn't attached, and it's like, what can I do now? OK, just try and lift them up. This was only the second day. What on earth is going to happen to us? And yeah. yet, this will be the death of me. The group now face a treacherous hike down the mountain. You OK? Yeah. Careful holding it. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ow. Only a short distance in, Chelsea is again struggling with the terrain. Don't like this. Walking on rocks down here, it makes me feel sick. No, I'm not doing it, mate. I've fucking had enough going up there. I'm not How doing it. I don't care, I'm not doing it. I'd rather give up. Just follow me and follow in my footsteps. With no other way off the mountain, Chelsea has to continue slowly on foot until the ground becomes easier. Oh, no, I'm... Right. I hate this. I loved the helicopter, I loved the wire, but that just scares me to death. Let's bring you in, here we go. Chelsea will be like dancing around these hills like a gazelle. Bear is waiting at the bottom with one final survival test before he decides who goes home. OK, so one of the things on these journeys I want you guys to get used to is living off the land and getting over your revulsion of wilderness food. 
Today I'm going to introduce you to the humble Mapani worm. There's more protein in this than in chicken. And really, as a survivor, you can live for months and months off these and water. Pass them out, one each. <laughs> the thing about the Mapani worms is that they can get stuck in your throat. Oh, no. And the best chaser <laughs> oh, no. is, of course, urine. Of course. <laughs> All you've got to remember, if you thought it was bad pissing in the bottle, it wasn't as bad as poor Scott, who had the job of boiling it to make sure it's safe to drink. Oh. Alex, here you go. Oh, oh that, that's been seen. Oh, no. And consider this a double whammy. You're getting protein, and then you're getting fluids. And well-hydrated pee, like all of yours was when you gave it in, is going to help you. Come on, then we better have armor party, well. Oh. I actually do need something to wash it down. Are you... It's not boiled? Oh, man. Fresh from the sauce. Oh, that's better. OK. Oh, God. I suppose I've had worse yum, in my yum, mouth. Yum, 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 yum. Should we wear our pellet first? No. Because then you'll realise how bad it is. It's a little bit like Parmesan cheese, but really, really strong. It's not like Parmesan cheese. This is Parmesan. <laughs> Oh, yeah, horrible. Mm. Barky, though, isn't it? It's not going down, it's quite short. Uh, that's, that's the point of the pee. What is it about your obsession with piss? It starts as an obsession with staying alive. <laughs> Think of it just like wine. Good for you, look, no fuss. Oh! Um. <laughs> 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 I mean, we're actually quite drifting into men behaving badly territory here. <laughs> so sorry. Oh. You're a beast of a woman. Mm. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> it's all come up on the turret. I love it. Only an English woman. <laughs> We're throwing the guy. I do apologise. We're done. Oh, what Okay, Samantha. This is especially difficult for Samantha. You're a vegetarian. I'm so sorry to let you down, but I just can't do it. Well, like I said, it's not my journey, it's your journey. Never going to force you to do anything. Okay. <sighs> Good for you, Sam. Try not to think about it. Choo choo choo. Street, your piss girl. What? <laughs> Look yes. at that. Look at that. Now that. Is what I call courage. God. Good girl. Amazing. Oh, Respect. Oh, well done. Respect. Bravo. Thank you. Oh, good you. Everything we do is for a purpose, whether it's to keep you alive or whether it's to get you into the mindset of a survivor, which is to do the difficult. But at the end of this, I've got to pick the decision one of you guys is going to be going home. And from what I've just seen, that decision is that much harder. I haven't eaten meat since I was four, I, something just kicked in. I was like, you gotta do what you gotta do. And yeah, survival instinct, I guess. We just drank um, our own piss, and I can't even remember the name of the worm. What was it? It literally all came back up. I'm not sure that the worm did, though, but the pee did. Michelle, go on, take her on a night out. She just downed her uranium one. <laughs> so I ate the worm. That's any consolation. <laughs> Did do a bit. <laughs> Every two days, Bear will gather the expedition and appraise survival skills. Whoever he decides is least equipped for the wild will leave. I think I do feel a bit vulnerable. Bear in mind, when I was given a compass, I was leaving three people over the edge of a cliff. It's too early to go home, and, yeah, I don't want to be on the flight home yet. Positivity, courage, determination, resourcefulness. Easy words to live by when everything's going well. Hard to live by when you're under pressure. But that's what these journeys are about. 
seeing how you respond to those hardships. Remember what I said right at the start? Get used to the hurting. I set you a task of going to find these airdrops. Jason, Michelle and Alex. You bought back some crazy gear. We didn't think properly, so we just thought by taking it all back, then we could see whether we needed it or not. I thought I had to get as much to take back to camp, and I got that the wrong way round. I made it pretty clear that make some decisions mm. about what you're prepared to carry for the next 12 days. Be ruthless. Stuart, do you find the airdrop all right? I was too busy looking at the compass rather than take a bearing and pick out a point. To follow that compass bearing, you know, absolutely to the end of the, the world is reckless. I probably wouldn't have made that final step over the cliff, but certainly I was heading in that direction. The first night watch was taken by Samantha and Alex. We had, yeah, the worst case scenario. We remembered your advice, but we just didn't quite follow it. I could see you were scared and actually did the classic thing of fear. You started folding towels and it's just a reaction to fear and you should be going in and kicking the proverbial out of these guys saying, get up. You know, and I tell you these things for a reason because these guys' lives are in your hands when you're on watch. Yeah. The rescue line this morning, nearly hurt your, your finger on that. As we went over the edge there, it could have ripped the top of my finger off, but luck was on my side today. What I was more interested in is how you responded to it. It isn't broken, let's get on with it. And there was no fuss, you gave me a big smile, you went, ah, oh, you know, it'll be all right. And Michelle, how was that for you? I absolutely hated it, and I was so determined not to let Alex down, I panicked. Well, I definitely saw a little bit of that panic in there. I was trying to keep Michelle calm and getting her to just concentrate on holding the line. I was just worried that we was going to lose the bags, mm. but I'm glad I'd fought having it on my feet. That was intentional. You're either very darn good or you got lucky. Chelsea, you did well, actually, on that line. You really looked out for Stuart. She acted so quickly, taking the backpack off, that I probably didn't have enough time to reflect on my fears. I don't mind things like that. It's just the hiking freaks me out. I just found it really hard. Stuart, you've captained England. What would you be saying to her? Bit of tough love, maybe. She's got it in her. Uh, Jason, I know things like the dirt and your hands is hard for you. It really drives me crazy. It is my Achilles heel. And the great survivors, their Achilles heel become their strongest weapon. I look at all of you at the moment, and the truth is I say you're all vulnerable. Michelle, who would you think is vulnerable? I think I'm vulnerable, Sam's vulnerable, and Chelsea's vulnerable. That's who I Why think. Why is Sam vulnerable? Samantha doesn't have the determination, that's all. But maybe that will come. Jason, who do you think is vulnerable? It's tough, but I think, you know, the person that I think is vulnerable only because of her heart's not in it right now, and, and that would be Chelsea. Here's how I see it. Stuart, impulsive. You know, I say in the wires, you'll only get it wrong once. Chelsea, who really supported Stuart on the line when he was scared. But I think at the moment, you're not giving enough. You're not committed enough. Jason, you will not be a great elite survivor if you're terrified of getting your hands dirty. OK, I've made my decision. And the wild is always revealing. But the lesson for me from this journey is that heroes in life are made. They're not born. The heroes separate themselves by their words, their actions, and their attitudes when it's grim. And it's up to you guys to show that. But this is Mission Survive. Chelsea, I just don't believe you'd make it to the end. OK, thank I'm you. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, thank you, Luke. I am disappointed in a way, but as well, I think it was definitely the right decision. It has been amazing and I've done something that I probably never would have done in my life. You know, always difficult decisions, but ultimately when it comes to the fire in the belly, that's something you can't teach. And with Chelsea, Hers was out.
There's no shame in being um, counted out at any stage during this process. It's tough from day one. You know, I think it's a double-edged sword. Uh, on one hand, I'd love to be able to advance uh, a lot further. And on the other hand, I'd love to have a pint of beer and a toasted cheese sandwich. Next time. Maurice is Linda. Is it really that difficult? No, it's really easy. Well, you're a f***ing idiot then. Bastard. Scott, may crash him hard. They've obviously got too much energy. I don't feel right. Oh, this hurts. <gasps> It's like, you all right? No. I need the medic now. Oh, Neil.